time you were here, which wasn't all that long ago, you were on the cusp of making a pretty sensational return to race riding after the stroke that you had at Fontwell back in the autumn. You did make a return to race riding, but it's a short-lived one. Just tell me more. Yeah, so um, thank you for having me on and obviously giving me the opportunity to sort of talk through this with you because um, I want it to be a positive kind of change of career, basically, because I'm just... I. Don't know what it was. I had a fall at Plumpton about probably three weeks ago now. And it was my first fall I'd taken since my stroke. And I got knocked out for three minutes. And I don't know what it was, but I just came round and I went, I'm ready to try something new. So that's what I'm hopefully going to do. <laughs> and did you did you sort of feel that, that coming back had been had been a mistake after you came round from the, the fall or, or no regrets? No, absolutely no regrets. And actually it made me realise how much I'm, how, how glad I am that I did come back. I remember, obviously, especially coming back to my scan, I think a lot of me had reservations that medically I wouldn't be able to come back. So I think I'd always sort of talk myself down um, about the chance of me coming back. And then I remember I was having a conversation with Liz Kelly, who obviously, you know, she she had a child and, and kind of retirement happened before she kind of had a chance to really retire. She said to me, she was like, why, why wouldn't you come back? Like, if you can, why wouldn't you? And I think that made it really like clear to me that, I mean, look, I don't know how Liz processed her retirement or whatever, but equally it kind of was taken away from her. Mm. And for me, I really wanted to get back and I still felt like I had something to prove. Like I still felt like I could get my career back on track. I could progress and like, I'm a person who I just want to progress. I want to move forwards. Um, and look, yes, success at that point was literally just getting my career back on track. But actually, you know, I really felt like I had more, more to do um, with my riding. But when I came back, you know, it's such a struggle, isn't it? Like it's two, two months ago, I think I came on here I had my first ride back and you know just felt like I was pushing water uphill and again I was just saying to you before like that that meeting last year I broke my wrist and oh sorry that the meeting at Plumpton that I had my fall I broke my wrist the year beforehand mm. and so it's my third time on the sidelines in the past year and I was like I'm not getting anywhere and for me it's it's just a case of I want to be successful and progressive and unfortunately, however much I have like built a career for myself that I'm really proud of, like right now, actually, I think I'm ready to move on and be progressive at something else. Mm. Um, so yeah. How do you reflect on on your career as a whole? Oh, I had the most amazing time. Honestly, I couldn't recommend it anymore. Like, obviously, you know, it's the most ridiculous roller coaster riding like it, yeah, I look I did my A-levels 10 years ago and I look at the last 10 years and I was flicking through all my memories on my phone and I was like wow I've been to I've ridden in Belgium France Germany Abu Dhabi like you just look at it and that was just in my amateur days and then I turned professional and I was riding at the festival and on those massive days and riding big winners and riding with the most amazing people and I just wouldn't have switched it for the world and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for it. I can't believe that it was even a reality. Like I never thought I'd be a jockey. I, I, my vision at school was earning enough money to be able to buy myself a nice horse to race. To ride at the festival to me looked like going and making loads of money so I could spend 40 grand on a horse to ride at the festival. And I got to do that just through my own like rider. I rode a grade two winner like just through my riding, which is just amazing. Like, I can't believe it. <laughs> so it seems that you're, you're more overcome by, by the fact that you've been able to do this rather than by the idea that it, it's now coming to an end, even though it's not the end that you wanted. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm feeling a bit more emotional than I thought I would do because I've been <laughs> so, like, since, since Plumpton, I literally have been like, I'm really, like, I'm so happy and excited about my next opportunities because... Yeah, totally. The last 10 years have been gifted to me. Um, and that I've just done stuff that I just never, ever thought I'd be able to do. And so now, as I say, I'm just so excited that hopefully as well, it's given me the sort of grounding and, and made me into a much better, stronger, resilient person that can go on and do something else.
um, resilience has, has never been something I feel that you've you've lacked oh god <laughs> i am i am actually a really teary person behind the like behind the scenes can you not be teary and resilient at the same time <laughs> I, i've had a really amazing support group of people who have helped me develop that resilience i think resilience is like the key thing in jockeys like it's just yeah, it's it's something you really have to have, and I I didn't I don't think I had it to start with, but actually through you know the support from Jamie and my partner, like it has developed, and it's just yeah, it's it, it's certainly something that I'm quite proud of because I wasn't very resilient to start with. <laughs> you, I mean, during your career, you know, you've done many great things in the saddle. You've done quite a lot of important work out of the saddle as well, particularly in terms of improving facilities for for female riders how far do you think we've come and how much further do you think we need to go well i'm really i'm really grateful that you pick up on that um because obviously well i know how much work you do behind the scenes without <laughs> yeah, but like it's really nice but talking what, about it. yeah but it's really i'm really like i'm really grateful that that is recognized because for me it was just a part of like i was fed up of sitting in a gazebo at one of the races yeah. I was just fed off of it for myself like equally I wanted to make sure that obviously for the future generations it would be better but like when I walked into one race course and there was a male physio operating out of our physio room I was like how is this still happening like this is when I turned professional like there were still like physios operating treating male riders in our in your changing in our space, ch- changing space. Yeah. and it just baffled me that nothing like everyone was just getting on in typical jockey fashion just getting on with it like you know that's how it's always been like we just got used to it um and obviously ideally change would have happened quicker than it necessarily did but equally i do hope that the work i've done can help future generations because as i say i just i really hope that other young female jockeys aren't in the position I was in growing up, thinking, God, the only way I can afford to ride at the festival is by buying a horse, and actually go, yeah, I can make a solid sound career. I don't have to be, you know, even though Bryony's amazing for the sport, you don't have to be a Bryony to, to have the most amazing lifestyle through this. Like, I, I make a living. I am having an amazing time. I still am having an amazing time, and I just want to make sure that it they are able to enjoy it, have suitable facilities and just a suitable playing field to be in. Rachel Blackmore's probably coming into the autumn of her career. Um, when you look in Ireland behind her and when you look in Britain behind, um, well, there was Lizzie Kelly and yourself and, and behind Bryony, and you don't see enough names on that table. What does it, what does it make you think? Well, I think, I think it still takes time. Like, realistically... The Rachel and the Brian effect won't be seen for another ten years because they're inspiring the ten-year-olds. Mm-hmm. We're not inspiring. The so you think we who, will see that in the oh, next kind of half generation down? Because actually, you know, like even the change in the last five, four or five years. You know, when I first started riding, we would be sat on our own at the races. Like mm-hmm. there might be, unless there was an amateur race on or something, it was very, very rare that I would be sat in a changing room with another female jockey. Um, so now, you know, there's Lily Pynchon, there's all sorts, there's all sorts of people coming through. A lot, obviously, more, I think the problem is as well, especially the way that female riders develop, there's a really good ladies pointing sort of scene. So mm. I just off the top of my head, you know, obviously there's plenty of female jockeys coming through, but there's a girl called Molly Lando who rides for Chris Gordon and she's actually doing really well, getting a really good solid base pointing she's riding winners um and then hopefully when her time comes she'll progress into the professional ranks whereas i think for the men it's not quite the same and they can go into a yard and go in a conditional and ideally the time will come that they'll leave school at 16 they'll go straight in and they'll be a james bone or whoever who just comes in and and flies but we have to be realistic that that's going to be 10 years down the line well hopefully no one is now changing in a in a gazebo or a facility that <laughs> yeah. is is not worthy of their of their uh, status as a, as a professional sports person watch live racing now on racingtv.com